All right, so we've created and converted a lead, but let's go back and learn a little bit more about the lead status, which I was mistakenly calling stage that displays at the top here. This is a component that's displaying the lead statuses in this cool pathway called the lead path. But what if we had a different way of working with leads than is shown here? This is just the standard way. What if we add a couple more stages in between before a lead can become converted? Well, to do that, as simple as modifying the page layout. So we'll navigate to the setup here. We'll go directly to edit object. Should take us to the object manager lead section. We'll go ahead and select fields and relationships. Select our lead status. And let's add a couple values. We'll call this need more information. This would indicate whether it would automatically convert, which we don't want it to. So we'll save in new, and we'll call this waiting for approval. Maybe there is an approval process in order for us to convert the lead, an internal approval process. This won't be converted. We'll go ahead and save. So now these pick list values are added, but they're all the way at the bottom. So let's go ahead and reorder them. We'll move this up, waiting for approval. And that looks good. Let's go ahead and save and navigate back to our lead. And here we go. More on the lead path. We obviously don't want too much or this will get a little crowded, but that's how you modify the lead status path. All right, so we've converted a lead, we've learned about lead assignment, we've learned about the web to lead form. I'm gonna dive a little bit more into lead mapping. I know we uncovered it when we converted our previous lead, but let's jump in there again. So if we navigate to the object manager and then the lead section, we can select map lead fields. From here, we should be able to map the lead objects to an account, contact, and opportunity. By default, all the standard lead fields are mapped to the standard contact and account and opportunity fields, such as company name, contact name and email, and company and contact address information. But if we have any custom fields, we'll have to map those over see if we have it mapped current generators we'll map customer priority and we don't have a customer priority on the opportunity side so we'll leave that for now and in the contact let's see if we have a field we can map that to product interest so it looks like we have mapped everything that we could. We'll go ahead and save this. And all the fields are mapped. Whenever you create a new field on the lead, make sure you also map it to an existing account or contact field. If you don't, you run the risk of that information not being transferred over when you convert. If it's something that's only necessary for the lead, you might not need to include it in the field mapping. Even if you add some new fields to the opportunity, contact, or account, 
you have to ask yourself if you want to be able to capture that on the lead also, and should it qualify for a field that should be added to the lead. The opportunity is the bread and butter of the sales cloud. This is where we can relate a specific company with a specific chance to sell a product. Right here at the top, you'll notice that we have this stage path, which the user can indicate which part of the sales process this customer is currently in for this specific product. They can also collaborate with other sales reps or log a call and mark activity related to the sale. Called back today, waiting for the proposal. Go ahead and save. You recall that in the previous section, we created what's called sales process. The sales process drives what stages are available and their percentage. If we navigate to change record type and change this to the business to consumer record type, you can go ahead and save. And you'll notice that we have less stages. This is because we added a new sales process and a different record type. Let's go ahead and create a new opportunity and we'll make this the business to consumer record type. We'll go ahead and type in an amount, set a close date as next Friday, opportunity name, um, new generator, account, we'll add the Sears company, one of our test accounts. We'll select value proposition. And you can see a relative probability percent is forecasted along with that. It's a dependent pick list. We can change it to negotiation review, change to 90%, and we'll change it back to 50. And you can see we have the amount 10,000. If we were to save this, navigate to the details section, we can see we have the expected revenue of 5,000. And that's because this field acts more like a formula field, which we'll cover in later sections. But the amount is multiplied by the percent value, in this case 50% or 0.5, and it returns the expected value. And this field's commonly reported on when measuring incoming revenue or potential revenue. So if we wanted to change the sales process, remember we can go to setup, Go to sales processes and create a new sales process. Call it just example, save, and you'll see here's our values that we can add for the stage. But let's say we wanted to have different stages. Well, in that case, we can just navigate to the object manager, straight to the opportunity fields, we'll navigate to stage, and we could add new values or remove values. We're going to go ahead and deactivate prospecting and then we're just going to add a new one called new stage. We'll set the probability to zero. We'll leave the forecast category as omitted 
and we'll add it to our example sales process and save so now we've edited the pick list value so that if we assign the example sales process to a different record type we can see these values but we've deactivated prospecting across all of them if you want to enable team selling that is if your organization has a use case for it like you support um, sales teams and sales teams work closely when they collaborate with an opportunity or a sale you should look into enabling team selling it allows you to help multiple users collaborate on opportunities by defining a role for each team member